Welcome to Need Crash Course, April 9, 2020. Good morning, friends. Hello. Hmm. All right, all right. Good morning, students. I welcome you to the Need Crash Course, April 9, 2020. As I have already started an online uh, series of tests, so tomorrow we have test on morphology of flowering plant part 2 starting from flower to lily AC. So on this chapter we can get uh, two MCQ questions in neat exam. So we will begin with the flower. Flower, what is flower? Flower is a highly condensed modified shoot of limited growth meant for sexual reproduction. Flower is one of the most important reproductive structure in angiosperm plants. This is the structure of LS of flower. Flower has four holes, as you know that. Two holes are non-essential holes or accessory holes. Two holes are essential or reproductive holes. When you <coughs> speak about the non-essential or accessory holes which do not take part in reproduction, these are mainly the first outermost hole that is calyx which is denoted as K. It is made up of mainly cells. The second accessory hole that is called it is denoted as capital C. It is made up of mainly petals. Then the two essential or refractive oral, the male refractive oral that is androgen, which is made up of mainly stems. Then the female refractive structure that is gynoecium. It is also referred as pistil. It is made up of carpets. When all these four holes are there, that flower is referred as complete flower. When a flower has calyx, corolla, androsium, and gynosium, then that flower is called as complete flower or perfect flower. Example, hibiscus. If any one of the oral is missing, any of the refractive oral or accessory oral is absent in a flower, then it is called an incomplete flower. Example, you have what you call a cucumber, you have maize, then coconut, then date palm, papaya, these all have incomplete flower. When both the accessory orals are there, that is, uh, this is the calyx which is made up of several and then this is the color which is made up of petals. The stalk of the flower is known as pedicel. The tip of the pedicel is solar and lava. This enlarged tip of the pedicel is known as thalamus. It is also known as receptacle. On which 
all the four orders are interacting. So, Canex, Corona, Androsium, and Gynosium are situated on the top of the thalamus. Dicandius flower. A flower having both Canex and Corona, then we call it a Dicandius flower. If a flower do not have both the axial rule that is calyx and flower, then it is said to be herbaceous flower. Herbaceous flower you can see in case of example that is before we are. When both the reproductive structures uh, that is androsium and gynosium are there, the flower is referred as bisexual flower bisexual symbol will write like this if flower has any one of the reproductive structure then it is said to be unisexual flower either it has androsium or it has gynosium so if a flower has only androsium then it is male flower this male flower is also known as staminate flower if a flower has only gynosium, then it is referred as female flower or it is referred as fistulate flower. A flower in which we cannot distinguish or differentiate canix and flower. There is no differentiation between sepal and petal. That flower only is known as perion. The members of the perion are called as tapers. Regarding the symmetry of the flower, we have three different types of symmetry. One is actinomorphic, second one, zygomorphic. Third one is asymmetric flower. Actinomorphic flower denoted by this symbol. When a flower can be cut into, suppose if this is a flower, when a flower can be cut into two equal parts in any plane passing through the central axis, then we call it an actinomorphic flower. So a flower can be cut into two equal parts in any plane passing through the central axis is said to be actinomorphic flower. Example of actinomorphic flower we have hibiscus, brinjal, datura. These are the examples of actinomorphic flower. Then zygomorphic flower. When a flower is cut into two equal parts only in one vertical plane, then we call it as zygomorphic flower. It is denoted by Percentage symbol. Example for zygomorphic flower are mainly P, B, Cassia, etc. Asymmetric flowers. When a flower cannot be cut into two equal parts in any plane, then it is said to be asymmetric flower. Asymmetric flower examples are mainly Kana, Maranta. Gingiva. These are the example for asymmetric flower. A flower can have the structure that is bract. Bract is a small leaf-like structure. This is bract. A small leaf-like structure from the axle of which a flower develops, that part is referred as bract. If a flower has bract, then we call it as bractea. If bract is absent in the flower, then it is referred as T e bractea.
concept and position of memory on thalamus with respect to other role models. We have mainly three conditions here. One is hypogyne. Second one is perigyne. And the third one is epigyne. These are the three conditions based on the position of the ovary on the thalamus with respect to calyx, cava, and androgy. below the level of the ovary that's why ovary is said to be superior and flower is known as hypogynous flower it is known as hypogynous flower so hypogynous condition you can see in example that is hibiscus onion brinjal Then in perigynous condition, so here thalamus is birthed, convex, on the top of which you can see the positioning of the ovary. In the case of perigynous condition, this thalamus is light cup shape with expanded rings like this. which is light cup shape ovary is situated in this cup shape ovary is half superior or what you say half inferior half superior or half inferior so the sepal, petal and what you call the stem lie around the ovary here. Yeah. So, ovary is half superior or half inferior. This kind of flower is known as perigynous flower. Perigynous flower is seen in rose, plum and in peach. In the example, you can see perigynous flower. Peri means surrounding or around, gyne means gynos. Then the next one, epigyne. Epi means above, gyne means dynosia. So, in this, thalamus is the deep cup shape. Thalamus is deep cup shape. All other words are situated above the level of the ovary. So, ovary is present deep inside the cup and all other sepal, petal and stamens are present above the level of the ovary. Ovary is said to be inferior and flower is known as epigynous flower. So, this you can see in case of example sunflower. In Kukumba, in these examples you can see this uh, epigynous flower. So these are the three conditions of position of ovary on thalamus with respect to other hormones.
parts of flower. The first uh, part you know that that is carex. Carex is made up of sepals. The, the sepals are usually green, photosynthetic. They are green, photosynthetic. This carex uh, will protect the floral bud. It protects the floral bud. Usually, the number of sepals or petals in a flower varies. In case of diapons, it can be tetramerous or it is pentamerous. The number of sepals or petals, either 4 or 5, or multiple of 4 or 5. Multiple of 4 or 5. So these sepals here, yeah, if they are united, if the sepals are united, then we call it a gamosepalous condition. If the sepals are free, the sepal, individual sepals are not fused with each other, if they are free, then it is called a polysepalous condition. Polysepalous condition you can see in uh, Mustard in uh, water lily and in Zelpi, then gamosepalous condition you can see in Brinda in Datura. In case of monopods, usually the number of the floral holes uh, we refer it as the trimeres. So here the number of the sepal or petal, or even in case of the staples, it can be three or it is multiple of three. So either trimeres or tetramerous or pentamerous condition you can see in case of angiospermic flowers. So being the outermost protective oral that is a calyx, it is denoted by the letter capital K. The next oral that is corona. Corona is denoted by capital C. Corona is made up of mainly petals. As I mentioned earlier, the number of the petals variable in case of dipod 4 or 5, multiple of 4 or 5 and in case of one part it can be 3 or multiple of 3. So it is made up of petals. Petals can be united or fused with each other that it is called as gamma petalous condition. Suppose if the petals are free, not fused with each other that it is called as Polypetalous condition. Gamma-petalous condition you can see in Datura, in Vinca, in Chile, in Brindle, etc. Then polypetalous condition you can see in case of uh, pea, in case of mustard, etc. Kamala, which is having petals, color, it is attractive. It attracts pollinating agents such as mainly insects, birds, etc. The shape of the corolla can be variable. The shape of the corolla, it can be tubular. Tubular corolla you can see in disc florex of sunflower. It can be funnel shape. It is seen in Datura. It can be bell shaped or campanile. It is seen in Kukumba. It can be rotate or V shaped or it can be salver shaped. So we have different shapes of Karola. Important concept that is the estivation. Estivation is nothing but the arrangement of sepals or petals or tepals in a floral bud. So estivation is defined as arrangement of sepals or petals or tepals in a floral bud with respect to the members of the same world. So here, we have mainly four types of estimation. One is, wall-weight estimation. 
Then next one is the twisted distribution. Twisted distribution is also known as the contorted distribution. Then uh, the third one is implicate distribution. And the last one is vaxillary distribution. One more is that, that is quintensial estimation, it is not there in uh, NCRT form. So, what weight estimation? What weight estimation? Whatever the number of the cellular metal, 4 or 5, So here, the margin of the cephalar petal, these are the margin of the cephalar petal, they are very near to each other without any overlapping. There will not be any overlapping here. So that kind of estimation is known as wall weight estimation. This you can see in yellow tropis, anona, mustard, in mimosa, in them you can see wall weight estimation. In the second one, twisted or contorted estimation, here. Yeah. The margin of the cephalar pattern, one margin is in, one margin is out. So, here, in and out arrangement will be there. Either the overlapping will be there in the clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction, whatever it is. So, one margin will be in, one margin is out. In and out arrangement is in for twisted or contorted equation. This you can see in the case of example, we discuss cotton and in lay spin. In these examples, you can see twisted. Then in every case equation, you have say five petals here in this uh, case. So one petal is completely in, one petal is completely out and three petals are in and out arrangement. That is in case of implicate estimation. So I draw the diagram to understand now. The posterior one is completely inside. So this is completely inside. Posterior one, the anterior one is completely outside, and remaining three in and out. In and out. So one in, one out, three in and out. This is implicate estimation. This you can see in the example that is cassia and in Gulmoha. In this example, you can see implicate estimation. Vexillary estimation, it is uh, the feature of the patronaceous flower. Here, five petals will be there of different size. One outermost largest petal, one outermost largest petal, this you can call it as standard petal. Standard petal is also known as vexilla. This standard petal in turn is going to cover to medium sized wind petals. Wind petals are also called as alike. Then the innermost smallest boat shape, partly fused, these are called as keel petals. Keel petals are also called as carina. So this vector illustration is seen in examples such as the P B. So these are the main types of estimation. We have one more type that is Quintensial estimation. In this quintensial estimation, 
2R in, 2R out and one pedal is in and out. That kind of uh, arrangement you can see in case of temperature estimation. This you will see in case of example that is wow. Okay, moving on to the reproductive structures or essential organs. Androgen, the male reproductive organ, first essential organ. It is present inside the corolla, that is inside the petals. Androgen is made up of stamens. These stamens can be compared to microsporophylls. Each stamen is made up of The stalk of the stem is known as filament and it is made up of anther. This part is called as connective. This anther has lobes. This is one lobe, this is a two lobe. It is referred as dithecus. If anther has two lobes, then it is referred as dithecus. So these are the pollen sacs. Pollen sacs or microsporangia. In these pollen sacs or microsporangia, four pollen sacs will be there in dithecus and the tetrasporangia structure. These pollen sacs are situated at four corners of this anther. These pollen sacs are made up of pollen mother cells which are deployed, which carry out meat division and they are going to produce pollen grains or we call them as microspores. These are the haploid male gametophytes, which in turn through mitotic division they are going to produce what you call the male gamete. One pollen grain can produce two male gametes usually. If a stamen is sterile and non-functional, then it is referred as stamenol. If a stamen is sterile, non-functional, then it is called as stamenol. Cohesion of stamen. The filaments of the anther can be fused with the, the same pore. Here you can find the condition that is called a adelphi. Filaments of the stamens are fused but anthers are free. This condition is called a adelphi. We have mainly three conditions here. One is monoadelphus, diadelphus, and polyadelphus condition. In case of monoadelphus condition, all the filaments are fused into one bundle. The anthers are free. This we can refer it as monoadelphus condition. This you can see in example hibiscus. In case of diadelphus condition, say 10 stems are there. Nine stems are fused into one bundle here. Nine in one bundle and one separate. This is diadelphus example you can see in P, B, where the filaments of the stamens are fused into several bundles.
So filaments are fused into several bundles, living and the spray. This is polyhedral first condition. This you can see the example that is sickness, bombax. Then you can see polyhedral first condition. Then you have a range of stem. In a range of stem, the anther can be attached to other floral pores. First one that is epipetalous condition. When the filaments of the anther are attached to the petals, then it is called an epipetalous condition. Epipetalous condition you can see in example such as Natura, Vindor, Vinca. In them you can see epipetalous condition. Then another one you have may be epipetalous condition. As I mentioned earlier, we have a world that is called as perion where there is no differentiation between calyx and corolla. And perion is made up of tepals by cell. If tepals are fused, you call it a gamophilus or gamotepalus. If the tepals are free, then you call it a polyphilus or polytepalus. So here, the filaments of this stamen are attached to tepals of the perion. Tepals of perion. Then we call it an epithelous condition. This you can see in lily, magnolia, etc. So, these are examples or types of what you call a regular stem. You can see another condition also that is gynandrous. Gynandrous condition. In case of gynandrous condition, the anther the stem and part is attached to the stigma of the flower. This gynandrous condition you can see in gallotropis. In cohesion of stem, we have two more conditions, uh, extra knowledge point of view, syntheneous condition. <coughs> Another one, synandrous condition. In syntheneous condition, Tetrodynamous 
So that is this condition here. Four stamens in the lab. Out of the four stamens, outer two are long, inner two are short. This is referred to as diagonal condition. This you can see in example Osimi. Same thing. Then tetradinal condition. It is found in mustard. Six stamens in there. Out of the six stamens. Inner four are long and outer two are short. This is referred as the tetradinous condition that you find in mustard family that is Brassicaceae. So this is about the, the length of the filament. So this is not about the concept that is androsia. Gynosium, that is the innermost oral, female refractive oral, it is also known as pistil. It is made up of mainly carpels. Each carpel is differentiated into ovary, style, stigma. This ovary is situated on the thalamus. This ovary is the solar basal part of the gynosium. This ovary is made up of locules or chambers. And in the locule you can see the presence of ovules. The receptive part which is going to receive the pollen grains after pollination. That receptive part is known as stigma. This ovary is connected to the stigma by a long tubular structure that is called as star. The number of the carpels may be variable. If one carpel is there, one carpel is two are there, by carpel is three are there, tri carpel is four are there, penta carpel is If carpel number is more than five, then it is called as multi carpel or poly carpel These carpels can be either pure or the are when the carpels are fused, then it is referred as syncarpus. Examples of syncarpus ovary, onion, brindle, china rose, etc. So here, the number of carpels are too too many, and all these carpels are fused, then it is called as syncarpus. When carpel number are more, and these particles are free, then it is called an epocarpus condition. When the particles are free, not fused with each other, then it is called an epocarpus condition. This example we have rose, then magnolia, water lily, mycelia. In this example, you can say epocorpus condition. So, this is regarding the fusion or free nature of the corpus, we have these two conditions. The number of the locules also variable. The number of locules can be one unilocular, two bilocular, three trilocular. If five locules are there, then it is pentalocular. Inside the locule, if this is the locule of the ovary, you have the arrangement of ovules in a specific pattern. This structure is called as placenta. Placenta is a special fertile parenchymatous tissue 
which can hold the ovule. So these ovules are held by placenta in a specific pattern. The pattern or the mode of arrangement of placenta bearing ovule in the locule of the ovary is known as placentation. The mode of arrangement of ovules in the ovary is known as placentation. So we have different types of placentation. First one marginal placentation. In this marginal placentation, it is seen in the monocarpillary ovary having the usually single locule. This is placenta. So placenta bearing ovule is present along the ventral suture. This uh, ventral suture, the placenta form reads the leg structure and this placenta will bear the ovule. Many ovules are arranged along the ventral suture on one side, that is why it is called a marginal placentation. This you can see in example pea, bean, rum and etc. Second one is exile placentation. Here, the ovary can have many locules. This is the wall of the ovary. These are the locules, and these are the sac. So, placenta bearing the ovule arise from the central axis of the ovary. Placenta bearing ovule arise from the central axis of the ovary. This type of placentation is known as exile placentation. This you can see in examples uh, such as lemon, orange, tomato, etc. And the third one, parietal placentation. In parental placentation, the ovary can be having two corpus or more than that, but having only single locule usually. This is the outer wall of the ovary. This is inner wall of the ovary. Placenta bearing ovule arise from the inner wall of the ovary. That's why it is called a parietal placentation. So here it is unilocular. In case of mustard and margin for example, There will be development of a false septum. This false septum is known as raplum. Hence, it appears bilocular, but basically it is unilocular. Due to the development of a false septum called raplum, it can appear what you call bilocular. So, this kind of example you can see in mustard, argimone. Excellent. Next one, basal placentation. In the case of basal placentation, this is placenta, this is ovule. Placenta bearing ovule arise from the base of the ovary, basal part of the ovary. That's why it is called a basal placentation. This you can see in the example that is marigold, then sunflower, fried eggs, maize, wheat. In these examples, 
example you can see basal placentation. In the last one, free central placentation. In case of free central placentation, the ovary is unilocular. Placenta lies freely in the center of the locule and it is solar and this solar placenta bears ovule all over its surface. All over its surface it bears the ovule central solar placenta bears ovule freely in the center of the locule. This kind of placentation is known as free central placentation. Example, you have primrose, dianthus, primula, and pink mouth. These are the example of free central placentation. So, this is all the concept of the placentation. Okay, so this is all about the, the morphology part. Okay, in the part one we learned about uh, root, stem, leaf and inflorescence and uh, today uh, in the brief synopsis discussion we learned about uh, the flower and its uh, parts up to placentation. So based on the learned knowledge about uh, the morphology, now we have to move on to taxonomy part. In taxonomy part, semi-technical description of flowering plant. So how scientifically, how technically we can explain the given angiospermic plant. So it is purely based on the knowledge of morphology. So in that uh, semi-technical description of a flowering plant, we have to begin with the first vegetative characteristics. In the vegetative character, we have to explain about the uh, habit. Habit refers to structure, then uh, root system, stem and leaf. These are all vegetative characters. When you take the habit, the given plant, whether it is herb or shrub or tolerary, whether it is twiner or climber, that we have to mention in this character. Then root system. Basically, you know that dicots have tap root system and monocots have fibrous root system. So, what kind of root system is present in that plant, you have to mention. Then stem. Whether it is soft, herbaceous, or woody, hard, cylindrical, okay, whether it is hairy. So, what kind of nature of stem is there? The present character have to be mentioned. Then the leaf, whether it is simple leaf or compound leaf, then phyllotaxy, arrangement of the leaf, alternate or opposite or over the leaf. Then we have to mention about uh, the venation, whether it is reticulate venation or parallel venation. As you know, that dicots are having reticulate venation then monopods are having a parallel venation. So these are all vegetative characters. So after writing the vegetative character or learning the vegetative character, we have to move on to the floral characters. In the floral character, first we have to write about the inflorescence. Whether it is the next kind of characters are plural characters, in that uh, first uh, that is inflorescence, uh, as you know that inflorescence uh, we have to mention about either resmose inflorescence or cymose inflorescence present in that plant. In some cases, special type of inflorescence also there. What specific type of inflorescence is present in the plant that we have to mention? The next uh, flower. Flower, whether it is complete, pedicellate, bracteate, or sessile flower, or e flower, 
whether it is bisexual flower or unisexual flower, pentagonous or tetragonous flower, hypogynous or epigynous or perigynous. So these conditions have to be mentioned in the flower. So then uh, first uh, four that is canids in this number of circles, circles, diagonocephalus uh, or polycephalus condition, and uh, we have to mention about excavation. Then corona, number of petals, gamopetalus or polypetalus, then what kind of estimation is there and shape of the corona has to be mentioned. Then androsium, number of stems, whether these stems are free or united, epipetalus or epipetalus, whatever the condition it is there, anthers uh, dithecus or monothecus, whatever the condition is there, that has to be mentioned. Then the next character that is gynosium. How many corpus are there? Whether they are syncorpus or epocorpus, how many locules are there? How the ovules are arranged? What kind of placentation is there? Okay, regarding spy and stigma has to be mentioned in gynosium. After gynosium, we are right about fruit. What type of fruit is there? Whether it is simple fruit or it is a complex or multiple fruit or aggregate fruit. Then uh, next we have to mention about uh, seed. Whether it is uh, endospermic seed or non-endospermic seed. Then uh, floral formula. Symbolic and numerical representation of uh, the floral orals of the flower is known as uh, floral formula. So we have to use the symbols of different orals and we have to write uh, the floral formula. Take for example of uh, the floral formula of mustard. So we have actinomorphic condition, bisexual flower, sepals uh, 4 arranged in 2 orals, 2 plus 2, then uh, corolla. Petals 4, Androsium, Stephen 6, Tetradenous condition, 2 plus 4, Dinosium, Bicarpenary, 2 carpel, Sink corpus means right in bracket, and ovary superior means the auto right like this. So that is the uh, underline below the G. So this is the plural formula of uh, what we call uh, the mustard. Last one, you have to write about the plural diagram. Diagrammatic representation of uh, the floral orals of a flower is known as the floral diagram. So these are the characters to be discussed in semi-technical description of uh, a flowering plant. See, briefly I will tell about uh, the fruit and seed. See, fruit is fertilized ovary or ripened ovary, you know that. This uh, fruit has the part, uh, parts of the fruit. The wall of the fruit is known as pericon. And another important part present in the fruit is seed. Seed is a fertilized ovule. See, pericarp, it can be hard or soft, whatever it is. So, fruit, one kind of fruit we have for our syllabus that is simple fruit. So, in that mainly fleshy fruit, we have one example, one type mainly drupe. Drupe is a simple fleshy fruit. In that, uh, we have to learn about uh, the mango as an example. So, pericarp is the clearly differentiated in mango. Outer epicarp, middle mesocarp, and inner endocarp. So, in mango, this inner endocarp is hard and stony. It is hard and stony. Then this is the outer epicarp, which forms the skin of the fruit. And this is the main edible part, that is mesocarp. So, is the main edible part in mango. It is soft, juicy and pulpy. Whereas in the case of coconut, it is another example of uh, drill. So, drill is a single seeded fruit. It is uh, having hard stony endocarp. That's why it is called uh, stone fruit. So, in coconut, uh, Mesocarp is fibrous. 
Bisocarp is fibrous. Endocarp is hard and stony. So what is the edible part in coconut? This you have to remember, very important for me point of view. In coconut, endosperm is the edible part. Endosperm. As you know that coconut has both liquid endosperm as well as solid endosperm. Liquid endosperm is the tender coconut milk and solid endosperm is that white copra, what we call, cobri, what we call. So this is about uh, the fruit. So uh, next uh, that is seed. Seed is uh, the fertilized ovule or it is a ripened ovule. So seed has seed coat. The seed coat outer taste pack and inner tent and it has a very important part that is embryo. Embryo contains radical, it contains primule. Radical can form the root system on its germination and the primule can form the shoot system on its germination. So seed can be grouped as dipart seed and monopart seed based on the number of the cardinal present in the seed. Another important uh, kind of classification you have endospermic seed or albuminous seed and another one you have non-endospermic seed one is endospermic seed and another one non-endospermic seed if a seed possess endosperm endosperm is not completely conjoined by the developing embryo then it is called endospermic seed usually monopart seeds or endospermic seeds with some exception so here you have cereals these are all usually endospermic seed a dipart endospermic seed is cast the non-endospermic seed means a seed which do not have endosperm endosperm is completely conjoined by the developing embryo. So endosperm is absent. Uh, that kind of seed is called a non-endospermic seed. Example, uh, P, B, etc. Structure of a dipart seed. This is a radical, this is a pendulum, these are polydons, this is hypopotyl. The part of the embryonic axis, this is the embryonic axis, the embryonic axis is also known as the epigallum. The part of the embryonic axis above the level of the cortidone is known as the epicotyl. The part of the embryonic axis below the level of the cortidone is known as hypocotyl. This hypocotyl can terminate with radical and epicotyl can terminate with minimum. Radical on germination gives rise to root system and uh, Reviewed on germination can give rise to shoot system. So, a dipart seed is a non endospermic seed. In this uh, gram or bean seed, as an example, then monopart uh, seed, example, maize. Maize is an endospermic seed. Maize is a fruit uh, as well as seed, it is a called grain. It is called as the Calliopsis fruit. This is the surface view of uh, 
the maize uh, grain. This is the embryo, and the major portion of the maize seed is affected by and spot. When you taste the longitudinal section, areas of maize grain. The major portion of the maize grain is occupied by endosperm. Two third of the maize grain is occupied by endosperm. It is surrounded by a yellowish protein layer. It is a triploid layer. This yellowish protein layer is known as aleurone layer. In this maize grain, the food ball that is pericot is fused with the seed port that uh, part to the pollen and hull. Embryo is present towards one side in the group. Okay. And this embryo is comparatively small, and this is the single large shield shaped part of this we call it as scutella. The surface layer, the epithelial layer of the scutella, it can separate the hormones and helps in mobilization of the reserve material from endosperm into the embryo. Embryonic axis is also called as the tail. This embryonic axis contains mainly Pluto and radical. This is the protective covering sheet of the pluto that is called as coleoptile, and uh, this is the protective covering of the radical. This is called as coleorhiza. Both coleoptile and coleorhiza are capable of uh, what you call growth. Radical on termination new rise to root system and plebeian on termination new rise to shoot system. So this is a, about brief about the, the structure of uh, the dipod and monopod seed. So moving on to the final part of this uh, chapter, we have mainly three families. Two dipod families are there. One is Tabasi, and second one is Solanaceae, and one monopod family is there. The third one, Lilies. These three family characteristics you have to remember. So, first family, a dipod family that is Tabasi. It is sub family of uh, the family that is. Leguminosa. It is also referred as Daphnomaceae earlier. The members of this Fabaceae family are found uh, all over the world. So, what are the characters of this, this family? So, as I told first, we have to begin with vegetative character. So, when you take the vegetative character, that is the first habit that is structure. So, the plants are herbs, then shrubs. Then we have trees, large trees, few large trees are there, some are twiners and climbers. Then the second one that is the root system. When you take the root system in Fabaceae, you have mainly tap root system. This tap root system has a special character in it. So it has a rhizobium bacteria. Rhizobium leguminosorum, which is associated with the root modules of this uh, tap root of the Fabaceae. That's why these plants, you know, the examples like uh, peel and uh, Turdal, Mumdal, Janakidal, Gurkidal, different types of dal, what uh, we have in Fabaceae, they are capable of biological nitrogen fixation. They can fix the molecule of nitrogen of the air and enrich the soil with the nitrogen compound. They maintain fertility of the soil. That's why 
this ligandus plant so like cabbage number is very important that's why one season we grow ligandus plant in another season we grow cereal so that we can maintain the fertility and can get better yield then uh, next character stem in small herbs we have some herbaceous stem in the shrubs and in tall woody trees we have hard thick branched woody stem we have and some are twinous some are twinous also then leaf leaf can be simply it can be stipulate alternate phyllotaxy in some cases you have pinnately compound leaf and here the character the leaf base is solen the solen leaf base you will find that uh, leaf is referred as pulvinate leaf solen leaf base and uh, you will find the use of reticulate venation as it is dicot leaf so these are vegetative characters then next you have floral characters of the family cabbage first you have in process in in process you have mainly racemos in process in this then uh, next uh, flower flowers are mainly here complete okay bisexual zygomorphic flowers here they are complete bisexual zygomorphic flower they can be hypogynous or perigynous hypogynous or perigynous flower pentamerous flowers these then uh, next we have calyx sepals five and these sepals uh, are fused so here you can find a imbricate distribution gamma sepals condition and imbricate distribution in some cases you can see wall wave distribution also then the next one we have corolla corolla is made up of five petals petals are five number and here paclinaceous corolla paclinaceous corolla already we have discussed about vexillary distribution you will find that vexillary distribution one large outermost standard petal will be there which is covering the two medium sized wing petals and in the most boat shaped partly fused keel petals that is vexillary distribution will find in corolla androsium stamens are 10 stamens are 10 diadems condition so here 9 stamens fused into one bundle and one separate bundle diadems condition and anthers are diadems then uh, next diadosium if you speak about diadosium ovary monocarpellary single carpel with a ovary monocarpellary usually in the long villa and many ovules on marginal placentation marginal placentation and here style is bent and stigma is round then the next character is a fruit fruit legume or pod then seeds many <coughs> non endospermic seeds are many non endospermic so these are all the characters uh, of uh, what is called pavisi family last year we have tried the floral formula and floral diagram so floral diagram i will show with respect to this pavisi family
or cephalinic anterior one in cabbage jamble. So nine fusion into one bundle and one separate and monocortical over with marginal placentation. This is symmetry of flower, mother axis, the vacuum of it. If the flower is tracked, then we have to mention, we have to draw the track lines. If flower is having track, we have to draw this track, otherwise we don't need to draw this track. Some important uh, useful plants are there regarding this family, Fabaceae, economic importance of the day, the pulse yielding family, pulse, uh, that is, uh, I told, green gram, red gram, black gram, different types of grams. So one famous, uh, what we have in our uh, Bulbara region, that is mainly Turda, Togribere, Kadanas Kadan, that is important uh, family member of this family, Fabaceae. Some fiber eating plants are there, fiber eating plants we have Pyphorium, then suspend, these are used uh, the, the, the fodder alien plant, not fiber, fodder alien plant, these are used as fodder or carrots. Fiber alien plant you have mainly protolaria gentia. These fibers can be woven into uh, rope, twine, mats, all that. Then one you have medicinal plant. This medicinal plant is mainly mulatti. This mulatti is known as Glyceriza. Glyceriza glata. It is used mainly in cup syrup. It is used as expectorant. And some uh, ornamental plants are there. Ornamental plants mainly you have tulip. Not uh, tulip. It is mainly what you call a uh, here is sweet pea, lipa. These are ornamental plants in case of family cabbage. So these are all the characters of the family cabbage. Moving on to the next family that is solanaceae. So as you can you write the characters here first, vegetative characters you want to write. Okay, in vegetative characters, as you the first habit, habit mainly herbs, mostly these are herbs, very few shrubs are there. Okay, so in case of Solanaceae, mostly they are herbs and few are shrubs and very rarely trees are there. Then uh, as usual in case of root system, you have tap root system. Then uh, in case of a stem, soft herbaceous stem, and uh, it is uh, having woody stem in case of a, uh, what you call uh, the shrubs, the stem can be cylindrical or hollow or it can be hairy. And uh, leaves are simple, then alternate, usually extipulate, having a reticulate variation. Then in floral character you have inflorescence. In case of inflorescence, uh, you have mainly what you call uh, the solitary inflorescence, cymose axillary or cymose inflorescence. Then uh, flower, flowers are actinomorphic, bisexual, complete, hypogynous, pentamorous flowers. Then uh, carries sepals are five in uh, number, gamma sepals, volvate estimation. Then corolla, petals are five in number, gamma petalus, then volvate estivation, then androgium, stamens are five in number, the stamens are epipetalus, attached to the petals of the corolla, anthers, diticus, 
dinosium ovary bicarpellary syncarpus ovary superior solar placenta placenta is solar and obliquely placed septum obliquely placed solar placenta this point you have to remember very important character of uh, this uh, dinosium uh, two locules are there many ovules on axial placentation fruit usually you have capsule in case of datura otherwise usually the fruit is berry the fruit is berry capsule in case of datura berry example you know tomato then seeds seeds are many and these seeds are non uh, endospermic in case of solanaceae fam okay the last uh, family now liliaceae solanaceae family is known as chili family or tomato family or brinda family liliaceae family is known as lily family or onion family as usual the uh, characters you have to discuss these plants are found uh, both in tropical 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 and temperate regions also habit uh, you take mainly they are herbs perennial herbs okay and a few uh, shrubs are also found root system fibrous root system you can find stem underground modified stem you can find them in case of uh, the, what they call onion and garlic and uh, bulb and the leaf simple leaves are there radical or coli inflorescence you have umbel inflorescence uh, type of racemose inflorescence flowers are trimers flowers flowers are trimers having uh, three or multiple three uh, usually perianthemum is there apples are six in number arranged in two rows of three plus three then androsium is there androsium Six. They are uh, antipilous and uh, epipilous in nature. Dinosaurus and the dinosaurian. Tricarpellary, syncarpus, tricarpella. Three locules with many ovules on axial placentation and the fruit. Fruit is capsule mainly. the seeds are many and they are endospermic seeds you find good examples here can be asparagus is there onion is there garlic tulip uh, asparagus the lily they are used as ornamental plant and uh, onion garlic they are can be used as a uh, vegetable they can be used as a uh, condiment and uh, you have one important example porchicum porchicum Autumn knowledge is a source of an alkaloid. Important member that is colchicum autumn knowledge. It yields an alkaloid called as colchicin. This colchicin can induce polyploidy. Okay. So these are the characters of a family Liliaceae. So today we have learnt the synopsis part of morphology of flowering plant. Part two, mainly from flower to the family Liliaceae. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, students. So you can uh, watch this uh, lecture class on YouTube channel, which will be posted today.